All right, time to answer your burning question. I got this question here from a viewer on YouTube, and the question goes, guys, can you make a video for proficiency in Michigan, exploring useful words and phrases for writing and tips? My friends and I are doing these exams in one month, and it would be really useful to make a video on this. Most often, I think for exams, the requirement is to write an essay. And I know one of the tips I heard myself a lot is that many students stress out about writing the ideal intro, then go really deep into the main body, and then they fail at the conclusion. And conclusion is one of the main points, in fact. So make sure you plan the time wisely and don't make this mistake. Really try to nail the conclusion. Yeah, most examiners will let you wear a watch during the exam so you can keep track of the time because that is something that trips up a lot of learners is that they run out of time and they have to rush through the last bit of it. So pacing yourself, that is a really great tip. Usually they'll give you some scratch paper on the day of the exam. And this basically means as a piece of paper that they're not going to look at. So you can put whatever you want on there. It's not at all taken into account when they do your grading. And you should use this. You should write an outline before you get into the actual writing of the final piece. So what are you going to include in the intro, in the body, in the conclusion? Even thinking about what might be some words and expressions that I want to use in these different parts so that when you're actually getting into the pressure of writing it out, you're not worrying about that. How do you structure a paragraph? Remember guys, a paragraph should have just one central point. One mistake I see a lot is people trying to present two or three different points in the same paragraph. If you're gonna talk about something different, start a new paragraph. So each paragraph should have one central point. How do you structure a good paragraph? Topic sentence, introducing the main point of that paragraph and supporting details. What are supporting details? Arguments and examples. You really need to practice. You know, if you're taking the Cambridge exam, for example, you can look up on the website of Cambridge and they have many example prompts that you could expect to find on that exam. And you should practice these a lot because you need to be ready for anything. And it's even highly recommend investing in a teacher because it really helps if you are getting assigned to write something each week and this person is correcting it for you and you go over together and they can help you to see what patterns there might be with mistakes that you are typically making. Let's say there's a grammatical point that you're always mixing up the present perfect and the simple past. So that would very clearly point to you so that you'll get a good grade on the written part of the exam. And depending who you are, it could be many different things. Spelling, right? Because it is a non-phonetic language, this can screw up a lot of learners. You have to really figure out what words am I typically spelling wrong so that you can drill, you can write over and over again those words in the right way. So when it comes test time, you get that right. Adding to Ethan's point about the fact that you have to write multiple kinds of text, learn the difference between formal register and informal register, as we call it. For example, no contractions. That's a feature of formal English or the use of more Latin words or not so many phrasal verbs. So get those down. And I would also say learn conjunctions linking words, especially more formal ones for the essay, like on one hand, on the other hand, furthermore, in addition, uh, nevertheless, nonetheless, uh, these are really, really useful. Having a diverse vocabulary, this is something else often they'll look at, that you're not using too much repetition. So you should build up your vocabulary. And I think one of the best ways you can do this is by reading a lot. Because when you read books, when you read news, they're usually written really well and they'll use more advanced vocabulary and a variety of vocabulary. So this is the best way for you to be exposed to vocabulary that maybe you're not already getting exposed to. And a final tip on that matter too, is if you are watching this podcast on YouTube or listening to us on a podcast platform, then you're just hearing us and we're using a lot of new vocabulary, a lot of expressions you might not know. We define some of them, but if you want to understand and really learn all this vocabulary, you have to use the Real Life English app. In addition to getting an intelligent transcript where you can actually interact and learn all the different words, anything that we don't define, you also get vocabulary flashcards. This uses smart technology so that you never forget any of these new words that you're learning. And this is going to make a huge difference. You don't want to come test day and that word that you knew you studied isn't coming to you. So you have to be using technology like this to make sure that those are really etched into your brain. You know, we've been talking a lot about accents today, specifically American English and British English. Pick one of these variations of English, British or American, and be consistent with them. For example, it's not a good idea for you to write in one paragraph of your essay, color as C-O-L-O-R. 
And then in the second paragraph, C O L O U R. That's a good point. Yeah. And guys, just remember that writing is speaking to someone on paper. So don't overcomplicate it. Sometimes students think that if they use really complex uh, sentences, it will make their marks higher. No, simplify your sentences. And when you finish writing, read the text out loud to yourself. So it sounded well as well. Oh, yeah, global citizens. I just want to tell you, in case you don't know, that this lesson was taken from the Real Life English podcast. However, it was just a clip from the full episode. If you want to access the full lesson and learn even more with us, make sure you download the Real Life app. See you there.